this another beautiful day that you've given us on this Fitness Friday coming to the end of the week. We thank you that you blessed us throughout this week. Many, many blessings, Lord. The gift of life, health, strength. You blessed us with family members. You blessed us with friends. And, and we blessed us, uh, you know, with so many things, Lord, food and clothing and shelter. We just want to say thank you, Lord. And we just don't want to take for granted any of your blessings. Lord, the mere fact that we're alive today is truly a blessing from you. And we thank you. We thank you for this Fitness Friday. We thank you, Lord, for uh, our first Fitness Friday presenter, Elder Rico Hill. And we pray, pray that you would bless as he share with us and as he share how we can better take care of our bodies. I pray that we will not just be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of the word of God so that we can be better equipped to serve you and to be the men and women of God that you want us to be. So Lord, we lift up uh, these prayer requests. We lift up Sister Sandra Smith and her family. We lift up Sister Lucinda uh, and, and her family. We pray that you would bless. We lift up my sister Stella, Yes. who's been dealing with COVID for over 17 days and Mercy. still testing positive. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that you would just touch her body. Lord, purge her body from this virus. Yes, and Lord, I pray that you would uh, cleanse her body, that she might be able to have a full and complete recovery. So be with her, Lord. Give her strength yes. and give her direction and instruction as far as what she needs to do so that her body can be, uh, 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 the, that virus can be removed from her body. And Lord, continue to bless uh, Sister Lois and Lois and uh, Brother Shankly mm -hmm. as they are there in the hospital in Huntsville. I pray that you bring healing to them. We pray that you continue to give uh, Brother Bobby full recovery from his about with sickness. We pray for Brother Wayne Cloud. We pray for healing for his body. And Lord, we pray that you would just continue to bless and be with the family uh, who would be funeralizing their loved one on tomorrow, uh, the Donis, Sister Donis, uh, Sister Dejanais, De De and uh, Sister Diamond, and all the other family members who will be funeralizing their loved one on tomorrow. We pray that you would comfort the family, be with them uh, during this time as they uh, anticipate the funeral service on tomorrow. I pray that you bring comfort for them. Lord, we thank you for what you have done and we thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, uh, we pray that if there's something or someone we did not mention that uh, needs a word or needs a healing, needs deliverance, whatever they need, Lord, we pray that you would grant it to them. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our thoughts, you know our everything, you know our needs, Lord. So, Lord, grant according to your divine will for our lives. So, Lord, we ask for forgiveness for all of our sins. We ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and create in us clean hearts and renew the right spirit, the right attitude, the right mindset in us this morning. So, Lord, bless us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. And we thank you again for what you have done. We thank you for what you're doing, and we thank you for what uh, uh, you're going to do. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, good morning, good morning. All right, we're blessed again to have with us Elder Rico Hill, and we pray that you would uh, just give him your undivided attention this morning as he share with us on this first Fitness Friday of the month. All right, Elder Hill. Good morning, Pastor. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you okay. Fantastic. Good morning, Elder Frazier. On the controls, can you hear me okay as well? Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. We got you loud and clear. Fantastic. It's not official until uh, Elder Frazier says it's okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and a happy preparation day, a happy Fitness Friday. You know, I'm always 
just amazed as he does, as Pastor Goodlow does the roll call. I'm amazed at how many people are joining from so many different places around the country. Uh, I never cease to be amazed by that. Um, uh, as I continue to give just some opening remarks, um, Elder Frazier, do you mind putting up for us as our opening text um, or our anchor text for this brief talk this morning? Could you put up Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26? It's always nice that I like the way that Elder Frazier is able to bring up various points as well as a text for us as we go through these presentations. So that's Exodus chapter 15 and ver verse 26. That's what we'll be looking at this morning. Um, and I thought it was fitting for us to take a look at this particular text because I just returned from a two week trip to Egypt. And the Lord showed me many, many things as I was there in Egypt. And this text kept coming to mind uh, while I was there touring from uh, Cairo down through Luxor and all the way down to Aswan. Um, some, some, some deep insights have come as a result, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you those this morning. So a happy Fitness Friday to you. Let's have a word of prayer as we get started. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity on this beautiful, beautiful day here in the Northeast. Not sure what it's like elsewhere, but it's the sun is shining. It's low humidity, and the day is just beautiful as we have this our preparation day and prepare ourselves for the Sabbath that is coming. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us that you would give us thy Holy Spirit. For nothing can be done without your spirit, Lord. The Bible declares, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So Lord, I'm going to claim the promise with my brothers and sisters that if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more shall our Heavenly Father give the, the gift of the Holy Spirit to them that ask? We are asking in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, he says, and said, this is God speaking, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and keep all his statutes, Elder Hill. All right. Yeah. He uh, he has started reading the scripture. Um, and for those of you who who are unfamiliar with with Elder Rico Hill, sometimes he's uh, live on the camera with us and sometimes he's he's in the background uh, which usually means he's probably uh, driving <laughs> or traveling so um, we lost connection and we're gonna we're gonna hang tight and uh, wait for him to to join us uh, but the scripture is there Exodus 15 26 um, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes uh, the Lord says, I will put none of these diseases upon you for for I will put none of these diseases, diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your God who heals you. So um, as we're waiting for him to get connected again, he sometimes is traveling, so he's not able to be on on screen with us. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with those opportunities or those moments when he's not not necessarily connected with us on on the screen so hopefully we can get him back um in 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 the next few seconds very quickly okay and while we're waiting uh let's take advantage of this time mm -hmm. i like what uh uh elder eddie did uh one one week where he just had questions and answers 
Okay. So what I'd like for those who are on with us today, if you could just share with us, put in the chat box some topics you would like for us to address in the future. Okay. Because you know, mm -hmm. it's always good to know what the audience would like. Sometimes we mm -hmm. share what we think is good, but you might have some things on your heart <clears throat> that you would like some information on, you'd like us to uh, address or deal with. So just put in the chat box any topics that you would like for us to deal with in our uh, devotion supplement. Any topics you'd like for us to deal with, any topics in the issue. Yeah, future topics. Uh, just put it in the chat box. We appreciate it. And we'll take note of it. Mm -hmm. And we will, you know, get together and make a plan. Collaborate together. All right. All right. We're still waiting for him to get connected. Um, yeah, I think I one, <clears throat> honestly, Pastor, I, I like how we, how we, started this week just um the conversation about our our feelings and our emotions and our anxieties i think we typically try to do that around uh, mental health awareness month but i think we can begin to broaden that throughout maybe i don't, don't want to say designate a particular week of the month to do it but more of those very practical where we need to grow in our feelings and emotions type of conversations mm -hmm. yeah. i agree i agree Right. Uh, I think Elder Hill is back with us. So yes. while he's making the presentation, <laughs> if you could just put in the chat box mm -hmm. any topics that you would like to see addressed throughout the year. And we'll we'll be I'll be in the background taking notes. So don't don't worry if you're able to put that in the comment section there. I will acknowledge it. Let's see if we can. Elder Hill, we got you. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, it seems in a better yeah, location. We got you got you loud and clear uh you were right in the middle of the scripture when when we got disconnected oh wow that's as far as we got was the scripture yes sir yes sir okay okay all right um all right so so we um i was sharing that with the scripture exodus uh 15 26 that two things stood out to me and one is that um that god promises that he would put none of these diseases on his people that were placed upon the Egyptians. Obviously, um, God did not place the diseases upon the Egyptians. It was um, it was their manner of eating and drinking and their lifestyles that brought about that. And that was a great influence on, on Israel. So therefore, um, God, in delivering them, he makes the promise that he is the protector based on this condition that they were diligently listen to his voice and they would do which that which was right in his sight and they would listen to the commandments and the statues that he had given and the statues that god had given his people were vast they covered a range of things all for their protection including uh sanitary laws you know how to make sure that diseases did not develop uh within the camp he gave them health, ref, um, I mean, dress reform laws so that they would be protected from the elements, uh, once again, being the God who protects them. And so it goes right along with that. The second part is that he's the God who heals. So even in all of his efforts to protect them, um, he also gives the promise that should they actually not listen, should they not do that which was right in his sight. Uh, should they not give ear to the commandments and to the statutes, that even still he's the God who heals them. But obviously God wants to head things off at the first stage, and that is the stage of uh, making sure that he protects them from getting diseases in the first place. So I was saying that while I was in Egypt, there were lots of things that, um, God showed me as, as I was there. And it was really interesting that the Egyptians, and by the way, I should share with you that uh, before becoming a Christian, I was very much into Egyptology. Uh, I was very Afrocentric. I believed in wearing, rather than wearing a cross around my neck, I preferred an ankh. Um, I would wear the scarab beetle in various um things that I would have as jewelry. 
and I would read every book that I could get my hands on and go to every lecture I could. Why? Because <clears throat> I thought it was more fitting for a black man, for an African-American to um, study those things that pertain to the cradle of civilization, Africa and Egypt and the vast society that they there, had there with with their advanced sciences and advanced mathematics and even down to the kind of building of the pyramids and the architecture that we still can't figure out. We still have not been able to figure out. But what's really interesting, you know, they have a book called The Book of the Dead. The Egyptians were obsessed with death. They were obsessed with how to preserve the body in death. They were obsessed with what their afterlife would be like, even to the extent of having certain gods who were the gods of the dead, who would make the transition from this life to the next life, one that would be smooth. And they would do things to appease those gods. Um, you know, the Egyptians, they wrote down everything in hieroglyphics. Um, and wherever you would go, whether... Upper Egypt, Middle Egypt, Lower Egypt, you would find written on these monuments, these statues and these uh, uh, pylons, uh, all manner of, of hieroglyphics that would tell their stories, that would speak of their conquest and how they vanquished their enemies and, and everything that they did they wrote it down in some form or another. Inside the tombs, they write information about that particular pharaoh or that king. Um, on the walls of the temples, they would write the stories of their war campaigns and uh, things about the Nile. I mean, everything was covered. But you know what I didn't see on the walls? What I did not see anywhere represented I did not see anything pertaining to health and diet and how they would eat. They were obsessed with how they would die and how they would preserve the bodies or what they would have in the afterlife. You know, eternal life was a huge thing. They were obsessed and fixated on death to the extent that they were trying to preserve eternal life. But it turns out that while they were obsessed with dying, they were not very good at living. The average, the average lifespan for an Egyptian during those many dynasties, and there were many dynasties, but they have they the scientists, the experts, the scholars have been able to exhume those bodies, as you know. And they have been able to examine those bodies using state-of-the-art equipment. And they're able to see exactly the diseases that they had. In other words, um, by using imaging technology, they're able to see um, that they had atherosclerosis, that they had hardening of the arteries. The arteries were so intact um, that they could see that there was blockage, that there was occlusion. Um, same thing that we experience today. They could see that they suffered from different types of debilitating um, bone disease, um, like arthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. You could see that they were suffering from cancers because you could still see the tumors in the bodies. So it's really interesting that in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, that God says, if you diligently listen to my voice, you'll get none of those diseases that the Egyptians brought upon themselves. Again, they wrote down everything, but rarely did I see uh, anything written about health and diet and how to live. This morning, I just wanna just encourage us. This, this wonderful, wonderful promise that God gives conditionally, 
in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, he promises that we won't get the diseases. Now, we live in a world of sin. And no matter what we do at this stage of our history, you know, we're subject to disease. But God, but, but, but at the same time, this doesn't let us off the hook. In other words, this doesn't mean that we should go and live whatever way we want to, because God, the God who gave instructions from the very beginning about what man should eat, you know, these things were shared and, and, and passed down from generation to generation. And the people, even the people of Egypt knew about, uh, knew very well <clears throat> about <clears throat> God's people and their diet and how they, they lived. They were well aware of that, and yet they chose a different master. They had gods of their own devising. They had um, means of, of eating that were not according to how they should. In fact, they, they actually even did things that the Bible explicitly counseled against doing. Like, you know, inbreeding, you know, there was to preserve the the bloodline that would be a uh, brother and sister that would marry. So there was lots of intermarrying. And that also brought on much deformity and disease. In fact, the in the famous King Tut, who was the boy Pharaoh, the bo the boy king, whom we've heard so much about and seen that amazing gold mask that's um, in various museums, and we've seen them online. Uh, that boy, Pharaoh, died at about anywhere between 17 and 19 years of age, but he was married to his sister, and his parents were also married to one another. And the Bible, we know, explicitly speaks against that. So once again, they followed a God of their own devising. They listened to a voice that was their own. They concluded things, although they had advanced knowledge, it just go to it went to show that no matter the advanced knowledge that one could have, without knowing the God of heaven, without knowing the God who heals, without knowing the God who protects, then people are subject to a 40-year lifespan and many, many debilitating diseases. Now, as I was as I return, I did a consultation recently, and I, and this is what I want to encourage you with this morning and this Fitness Friday. When I got back, I did a consultation with a gentleman, Christian brother. He's uh, he's come down with a cancer, a very rare cancer, and I was giving him a consultation the other day, and uh, you know, in this consultation, I typically ask questions, pertinent questions about lifestyle. I asked him had the doctor shared with him how he came down with this particular cancer. And he says, no, that the doctor had not. <clears throat> In fact, the doctor said that it wasn't anything that he had done. Well, that's no different from the doctors who were attending to Bill Clinton some years ago, who on television expressed that his heart disease had nothing to do with his lifestyle when in fact we knew that Bill Clinton frequently went to McDonald's. Even though he was an avid, avid runner, he loved to run to McDonald's and get a quarter, bound, quarter pounder with cheese, an apple pie, and a milkshake. But yet they said it had nothing to do with his lifestyle or his diet. So we have to dismiss that. But this particular consultation and this gentleman, who was a Christian, by the way, who certainly was longing for eternal life, but he had never learned how to live. He was thinking about, of course, when you come down with such a diagnosis, you start to think about your own mortality. You start to think about, you know, will you be able to pass from this world to the next? And as a Christian, you certainly think about that. But something struck me that he, while thinking about how to try to preserve life now because he's got this diagnosis and thinking about what life will be like and whether he will survive this cancer. 
he still did not know how to live. Because as I asked him questions about his lifestyle, he shared with me certain foods that he ate. Now, he wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist. Um, many of you know the Seventh-day Adventists have a particular health message. We believe in the, in the eight laws of health. I've shared them many times on this call. And this particular gentleman was a Christian. And even as a Christian, the Bible teaches us certain things. And God says, if you, if you listen to my voice, if you would listen to the statutes and obey the statutes that I've given to you, none of these diseases will come. Now, again, the doctor says, it's just a rare thing. But the Bible teaches in Proverbs that the disease doesn't come without a cause. The disease does not come without a cause. That's Proverbs chapter 26, 1 and 2. So the Bible teaches that sickness comes as a result when you reason from cause to effect. So this man had not reasoned from cause to effect, nor had his doctors reasoned from cause to effect, and they simply dismissed his cancer as something that was rare and he shouldn't worry about it. Now, that's the first part of it. The second part of it that I really want you to hone in on is the fact that as I began to ask more questions about what was his daily food routine, and he walked me through a few things. I won't go through them all, but one thing st stuck out to me, and that was the fact that he says, I love my bacon. Now, people don't say they love bacon unless they're talking about pork bacon. They don't really necessarily say, I love that turkey bacon or I love that beef bacon. No, they love the smell of that pork bacon. And this was the thing that he said was a part of his daily routine. So I shared with him and now I share with you. God has written on the pages of his word. While the Egyptians didn't write down anything that pertained to health, other than, you know, some offerings to the gods of honey, milk and honey, there are not a lot of things written on those walls about health and diet. And therefore, the Bible records that they suffered many a disease. And now that's validated from my own personal historical trip to Egypt. This gentleman who is now battling cancer has not read the pages of the word of God, even though he's a Christian, where it talks about clean and unclean, clean and unclean foods. So here he loves an unclean food that possibly, quite possibly, could be a contributor to his cancer. Now, that's that's the past. This man wants to live, just like the rest of us. So, as I asked him, are you ready to fight for your life? And he says, yes. I said, then you need to understand what the Bible says about how you should live. And in addition to that, understanding that certain foods feed cancer. Hear me out. I close on this idea. You can be feeding cancer and not even know it. And I'll just give you simply the things, as I shared in this consultation, the things that feed cancer that you want to avoid. Not if you have, you know, every single one of us is about stage one cancer. Everybody has has some cancer in our bodies. But our T cells, our fighter cells, our killer cells, they go through and they wipe it out daily. Why? Because you're designed, fearfully and wonderfully designed by a God who makes the promise that he will protect you from the diseases of the Egyptians. As we, conditional, as we diligently heed the voice of the Lord our God. So here are a couple things that will feed cancer. Sugar, I've talked about it before. Sugar feathers the nest. But cancer loves sugar. Sugar is acid, and it is something that in the body is going to promote disease. Cancer thrives in an acidic environment. 
cancer thrives in an acidic environment. So sugar, white refined crystallized sugar is very acidic and it will feed that cancer. It will feed the cancer that you don't necessarily have already. It will promote cancer. Now, there are lots of alternatives, and we'll talk about that in another, on another talk. There are different ways. There's honey. There's maple syrup. But white refined sugar, there's no one, no one but no one who should be at this time in 2023 using white sugar, including pastries and other types of things that are made from white refined sugar. That will feed cancer. Um, all of your meats are inflammatory and they're also acidic. They will feed cancer. Cheese is acidic, will feed cancer. And you know, even when you're having that nice big salad and you're like, you know, I'm doing well. Look at all the colors of the rainbow in my salad. A nice big salad every day with all types of greens and whatnot. But if you are pouring a dressing that is high in vinegar, like a balsamic balsamic vinaigrette, or any of the uh, many of those sh shelved shelved uh, salad dressings, they're high in vinegar. Read the labels. If they have vinegar, then they're going to do two things. One, make your body acid. And the other thing is, it's going to destroy the microbiome in your gut. And that is your immune system to fight. So write it on the walls. It's in the pages of scriptures. God wants to protect you. He wants to heal you. But you have to diligently hearken to his voice. Don't be like the Egyptians. The Egyptians while they were obsessing over death and dying and eternal life, they never truly understood how to live. But God has taken his people and he's given us a prescription on not only how to die in Jesus, but also to live and to live more abundantly. May God bless you as you seek to be fit on this Friday. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Elder Hill. We appreciate that sharing with us. And uh, just want to encourage the saints. I know some of the things that he listed are perhaps things that we uh, consume. But what we have to do is pray that God will give us the strength and give us the desire to remove those things from our diets. And the thing about it, a lot of times, what, what, what we don't understand is that I think uh, uh, Elder Hill is because these things don't have that destructive effect, effect on us immediately and they taste good, we have a tendency to think, well, what's wrong with them? But we have to understand that what you're sharing with us is over a long term period of use. You know, when we use it for years and years, it builds up and builds up and builds up, you know. So so let's take heed and let's follow the counsel that we received today. And again, like we said, let's not be just hearers of the word, but let's be doers of the word. Somebody Someone asked, asked a question. Someone's asking a question. Um, what salad dressing should they use? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, make your own. The simplest one to make is one with lemon juice. Lemon juice is God's vinegar. Gives you that sour taste, you know, that pungent taste. Lemon juice with a little bit of olive oil, add some garlic to it, and salt to taste. It's so simple. And it will be just very similar to your Italian dressings. But then get yourself a good healthy, uh, a health cookbook. Um, in it, you will find many dressings. You can, they have figured out and almost perfected um, a version of the salad dressings we like, whether it's ranch, whether it's blue cheese, whether it's Thousand Island, or even Russian dressing. Uh, there are lots of cookbooks that have those laid out, and you can just um, make those. You probably even can find them online. Make your own. There's a great, ses um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a great um, sunflower seed dressing 
that you can make that very similar to ranch. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do, but please avoid those vinegars. They are deadly on a whole lot of levels. And I only gave you just a couple. Uh, Elder Hill, what about the dressings that you can buy like in Whole Foods that say they are vegan? Yeah, a lot of those are coming out. Notice those dressings are kept in the refrigeration section. See, they put the vinegar in those dressings when they are placing them on the shelf. Why? Because they are looking to give those shelf life. Shelf life. But the longer the shelf life of a food product, the shorter yours. Remember that. When they're trying to preserve something, they put things in it as a preservative and it's not for your health is to keep it on the shelf. But the longer the shelf life of a food product, the shorter yours. So to your point, Pastor Goodlow, the ones that are coming out now who follow your heart and different things like that, they are putting it in the refrigerated section and they will either use an apple cider vinegar or something else. Some of them are even using lemon juice. So read the labels. Someone is asking the question, is apple cider vinegar bad? Apple cider vinegar is a better vinegar. However, it is a great medicinal vinegar. And medicine should be taken for a period and stopped. Medicine is not necessarily the thing that you would do as a lifestyle daily. So there are people who are trying to bring down their blood sugar, bring down their blood pressure. Um, apple cider vinegar is excellent for a lot of those things. But again, keep in mind, it's medicinal. And anything that's medicinal is for a period and not for long term. But it is a better vinegar. All right. We have another question. Is the Italian dressing too high in sodium? Most of those dressings you buy on the shelf, salt is also a preservative. Remember that. And they're able to take salt and chemically reduce its salty taste to the extent that really it's functioning more as a preservative, but it has the same effect on blood pressure that if you were to take so much salt that it would be unbearable for you to taste it but they're able to reduce it so that it's a preservative, but doesn't affect the taste. It's a chemical process, it's quite brilliant, but it's deadly. So therefore, Italian dressings that are on the shelf are inherently bad because of the vinegar and the salt, the sodium. You wanna avoid them. Sometimes we're wondering, why is my pressure high? I eat salads. I'm eating good food, but you're putting a bad dressing on it and it's taking you down a path even though you're trying to eat healthy. All right, all right. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate that. And uh, we just thank God and we pray that uh, we will follow uh, the counsel that we received today so we can have a better quality of health and long life. Amen. Remember the promises of God. He'll put none of these diseases on us if we just follow his voice. You've heard the voice of the Lord today. Amen. Um, Sister Bell, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that question offline. I'll, I'll get, that, get that message to you uh, as, as we prepare to close. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I know you had an awesome time and uh, I want you to share this with others, whether it's, you know, via our YouTube page. Sorry for those getting getting connected to you a little bit late, uh, but definitely for those of you that have been watching through our social media channels and those that are listening by way of our prayer line, uh, we definitely want to thank you for joining us this morning. Um, very quickly before we pray, um, I believe Sister Veronica, Sister Veronica Dixon's great grandson, I believe his birthday is today. I saw that in the comment section. And uh, we also have a number of individuals that we want to lift up in prayer. So um, please, please, please enjoy the rest of your day. Pastor, anything from you 
um, outside of our you know worship services on tomorrow that we need to to highlight? Uh, no, no, just uh, join us tomorrow for our divine worship service for our Sabbath school. Bible study time starts at 10 o'clock, and we will be at the Fifth African Baptist Church tomorrow. That will be our last Sabbath there. So make sure you come out and join us for our united worship service with all our churches here in the city. And then uh, for the members of uh, Ephesus Church, we will be having a, 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 a business meeting on Sunday at 1 p.m. Sunday at 1 p.m. You should have received that information in your text. All right. All right. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for the insights and the experiences that were shared from Elder Hill. And we thank you for um, the, the progress that he has made, he and his team has made over the years when it comes to health and um, allowing um, you to lead him and his team and directing us and others back to a, a biblical way of living. So we are thankful again for the insights uh, that were shared this morning regarding um, how damaging certain foods can be to our body. But we're also mindful of the promise that you uh, committed to us and that you will put none of these things upon us um, when we follow your, your statutes and your guidelines. So we thank you again for his ministry, their ministry, continue to bless him and his family. Do the same for our pastors and our, our elders and their spouses here locally as well. We lift up uh, Sister Stella Walker for, we're asking for interceding for her regarding health and healing of her body. The same for Sister Brenda Clark as well. Um, there are a number of other individuals who are seeking prayer for healing, restoration, spiritually, financially, uh, mentally, um, in every facet of their life. We're also lifting up Sister Sandra Smith and her family as well. And we want to give these concerns to you, knowing that you are the type of God who not only hears, but also answers prayers as well. So do something special for us today. Heal us from the inside out. Remind us that you are still in control. And um, on tomorrow, when it is time to meet together as a, as a church body to worship you in spirit and in truth, may we receive a message from you uh, that will encourage us, that will challenge us to be the men and women that you've called us to be. We thank you for the gift of salvation, and we pray that we see you in peace when you come. In your son's strong name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right, we, saints. Yeah, one, one more announcement. Um, Sister Lejean is going to get me if I don't announce this. Sunday morning, Sunday morning at 8 a.m., City Park, the walking club is meeting at 8 a.m. right across from the museum. So Sunday morning, June 4th at 8 a.m., um, at City Park, right across from the museum, our church is having its monthly walking club meeting. All right, come on out and get your exercise, fresh air, good sunshine, and uh, just come on out and enjoy. Amen. Sunday morning, eight o'clock. All right. All right, you guys be blessed. Um, have a great rest of the day and uh, we will see you on magnificent monday take care all right be blessed